Wake that ass up early in the morning. The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ Envy, Angela Yee, Charlamagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. We got a special guest on the line. He's been here before. The brother Dion Taylor. Welcome back, brother. Man, what's happening, man? Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. You are, hey, hey, Dion, you are a thriller making motherfucker. You hear me? <laughs> you got the new film out right now. It seemed like it's another thriller. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a thriller, man. But you know what? I, I how, love how I love trying to make the films, man, that have you know that obviously are thrillers, but they have a great message inside of them. <clears throat> Just like Black and Blue, I feel like Fatal is like on the same level in terms of like having messaging inside of the film. What, what do you enjoy most about <laughs> thrillers? Directing thrillers. Um, I love audiences, man. So thrillers and, and horror sometimes, you know, really, really come off better for me because I love entertaining people. You know, when I was younger, man, going to the movies, you know, movies always acted as escapism for me. So you got all kind of, you ain't got no money. <laughs> you know what I mean? You living in the projects like I was when I was younger. You know, being able to go to the movies, man, you, you expect that film to, to transport you somewhere else. So as I got older and became a filmmaker, I always wanted to make movies that just entertain. But also with my activism, I figured out a world that on top of the entertainment, if I could put a message inside of that entertainment, then I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing as a filmmaker. How do you judge how a movie does now? Because there's so many theaters closed. It's, it's so difficult to show movies. I mean, I don't even know how you even finish this movie up with the pandemic. So how do you judge how successful a movie does now? Uh, you know what? It's a lot of people slipping through the cracks, <laughs> you know, because ain't no, it, you can't really test no more. You can't really see like, oh man, that movie did this. And then streaming is a, streaming is a whole nother world now. You know, you could, you could put something on streaming and, and no one knows how it does, but them, you know what I mean? Uh, fortunately for me, man, I'm, I'm, you know, our film Fatal, which comes out December 18th, it is going to theaters everywhere the theaters are open. Uh, so right now there are, plenty of markets that are still open, but AMC and a few other outlets are doing a great job. They have this thing called uh, amctheaters.com where you can go there and basically rent out a whole theater for you, your friends and your family. And then they got low capacity stuff that they're doing. So we're buying one, get one free ticket. And um, look, man, I, I, I just know what I know, which is I love films in the theater. Um, shortly after that, I'm sure the movie's gonna, you know, transition to a world where people could get it at home. But the theater experience, man, ain't nothing like it. And we got to be careful too, man, as African-American filmmakers. It took us it took us a long time to get our movies in the theater. A long time. Y'all don't remember it only a couple of years ago that people like Will Packer and Tyler Perry, a few other people broke that door down where we could get these movies out consistently. And now we're in a position where if we all of a sudden just start taking everything we got to streaming, when they open them doors back up, <laughs> we don't want to be back in the straight to DVD box. Right. That's real. I was going to say, I was going to ask you that. I see a lot of movies are going straight to stream. And I was going to say, you know, what, what are your thoughts on that? Because, you know, now people are like, after movie theaters, we'll just go straight to stream and not have to worry about it. DJ Envy, you just said everything, man. I'm watching that because I know as an independent filmmaker, man, doing this last year was, you know, obviously an incredible year for me and, and our team here independently. We released black and blue and the intruder in one year both theatrically but prior to that man it took me almost 10 years to get a movie in the theater you know where they trying to put you in this or doing day and date type thing so now as i look at the landscape i'm going like damn man i hope we don't go for that where all of a sudden now the next eight months we like streaming 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 then all of a sudden the theaters open back up and we don't have no you know we don't have no films that's hitting the theater so we got to be very mindful of that man so I, don't worry, I'm out here. <laughs> That's my job. Make sure we go to the theaters. Now, 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 did the pandemic, Dion? How did it? How did it impact the production of this film? Because I saw you on Instagram. Y'all had the mask on and social distancing. I'm like, how was? How that? How that happen? So I shot this film, <clears throat> Fatal, right before the pandemic. But then we shot during the pandemic. Um, it's interesting, man. We were the first film to be shot in the U.S. during the pandemic. And uh, obviously, because we're 100% black owned production company, man, we were we were out there grinding. That film is called Don't Fear, which stars uh, Tyrese and Joseph Sikora. Mm -hmm. Terrence J is in it. Uh, that was a really dope horror film. You know what? T.I. too, after, right? T.I., yeah. After a couple of months, man, 
I just kind of got, you know, a little bit like, man, how do we get out here and get, get working, man? I always feel like the energy is don't allow the moment to control you, control the moment. And uh, just like you guys are doing right now, man, you got to figure out a way to get through this. Otherwise, man, you sit, you sit back, you scared, you know, so that's why we call that film Don't Fear. But Fatal, which is coming out December 18th, we shot that a little bit right before the pandemic. Now, this is, this is the big story about Fatal. It was going to be my first ever summer release. And, um, <laughs> you know, if you're a filmmaker, you want a movie to come out in the summer. Like, that's what you're fighting for. And uh, the pandemic hit, man. I just remember watching the NBA game and being like, yeah, what you mean the game is canceled? And then everything else just went with it. Wow. You know, you and Michael Ealy work together a lot. Y'all getting y'all Will Packer, Kevin Hart, Spike Lee, Denzel on. What, what, why y'all got so much chemistry? I think Ealy is dope, man. I think he's underrated. Um, also, I, I, you know, people don't realize, you know, Ely is 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 a, a great box office draw as well. Everything he's done is successful. Uh, people go see him. But more importantly, when I had an opportunity to work with two-time Academy Award winner Hillary Swank, I was trying to think of who from the culture could I put her with that we've never seen or that, that would be, you know, a little bit different for a film. And Ely was the choice, man. I had just finished The Intruder with him. That film had opened number two in the world. The reviews were great. People loved seeing him in, in this complex type of role, different from what he, you know, the perfect guy and other things he had did. And uh, man, I, I I didn't miss with this one. Ely is incredible. I mean, opposite her, um, you know, we wanted to put a film on a platform that could be considered like a Gone Girl or a true fatal attraction, if that makes sense. Something on the level where the performances are through the roof, the cinematography is through the roof and it's complex. So what you see in the trailer is not what the film is about. Do you know what I mean? And uh, I think he delivered on every level, man. And Hillary and him together, a few times, you know, on set, I had to be like, yo, this is, it's incredible to see. Now, you, you know, know they're gonna actually sleep with each other or something? What'd you say? You thought they was gonna actually sleep with each other or something? <laughs> A couple times. No, 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 they 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 no, they were always professional, man. But when they when actors lock in in film, if you're doing it right, you know, it's it's the chemistry is always gonna be through the roof. You know what I mean? So they had some very hot, crazy, you know, sex scenes. They had some very crazy intimate moments, but then it's you know, it's a thin line between love and hate, and that's what the film explores. Now, with, with everything that's going on in the world, we see a lot of companies having a black initiative now and they're doing stuff for black people and giving this, uh, are we seeing the same thing with Hollywood? Is Hollywood opening the door a little bit more and say, you know what, let's let's get a black initiative? Yeah, man, I think y'all know that. Y'all in the entertainment business, man, you guys see what's happening and, and how it's moving. I think it, it's only a matter of time for, the, to, for this to have happened. But yeah, man, we're seeing a lot of companies step out you know, speak to the black audience, uh, push forth, you know, black men and women into the space. And I think that's great, man. What I'm, what I'm really out here fighting for is ownership though. I think it's one thing to have a job or somebody to validate you or give you a chance. But I also think it's more important for us to be able to own and control who we are in our own brands. And uh, what we represent here at Hidden Empire with the intruder, traffic, meet the blacks, fatal, we own these films outright. So now what I'm doing is knocking on the door at Hollywood and saying, yo, allow me to keep distributing while also being an owner. And that's very unique and different. Uh, I can only name a couple of people that own their content. And uh, I just wanna be one of those people that can keep doing that. So I'm hoping that the market changes to where we get more people doing that. You know what I mean? Cause at the end of the day, Envy and Charlemagne, like we gotta create libraries. If we don't have no libraries, then then all we're going to be doing is repeating the same thing over and over again. It's interesting when I go to Hollywood now and I see a movie and I'm like, yo, man, I would love to remake that or rebuild that. I got to go to them for that. Do you know what I mean? So hopefully in the next 10 years, we have a world where my son and my daughter, they want to go remake Fatal or remake The Intruder. Like, you know, it's dad in the office, like, go and do it. You know what I mean? Period. Yeah, it's not too many that own the content outright. Like, I know you, Tyler Perry. I don't even know who else in the film world. Oh, either. 
<laughs> I don't either, man. But I mean, that's what makes it. But look, it, it's it's hard to do this, you know. Like, you know, you look at the the product now, where you're like, damn, look at Fatal with Hillary and Michael Ealy and Tyron Turner, and look at the Intruder, and look at Black and Blue, and you look at all this stuff. But, bro, I was, you know, I was putting thirty five cent in my gas tank, you know, eight years ago, sleeping on somebody's couch, hoping I could, you know, get a meeting with someone. And, um, but it was all of those no's that allowed me to tell myself yes and get out here and to push, you know what I mean? And push and push. And then when, when the yes started to come, I didn't want those yeses anymore because I was building something else. So it's hard, man. But I think there's a lot of people out here that have amazing ideas, amazing TV ideas. And I'm just saying, pursue it, give them one, but then give yourself two. You know That's what I mean? Right. That's right. right. You know, uh, um, a lot of actors, right? Like, it's hard for them to shake the characters of the role they played, especially when they're doing these thrillers. Do do you do you take your work home as a director? Because you're the one that really got to live with every emotion in this film. Yeah, always, man. I think um, if you're not doing that, then you're not a real artist. Um, part of part of what I try to present in every film is the ability to overcome something. Um, you know, black and blue, Naomi Harris, she had to overcome, right? Like racism and corruption. You know, if you think about traffic, Paula Patton had to, you know, get through that world. And Fatal was no different without me giving away what Fatal is about. Yes, it's an erotic thriller. Yes, it's a noir thriller. But what Michael Ely's going to go through in this film is, is true to form, man. Like it's it's a reality that we actually live in now. So people are like, oh man, it looks like a obsessed. And I'm like, nah, that ain't it. <laughs> you know what I mean? This is this is a completely different animal and it deals with some real things that we're going through in life. And uh, he has to figure it out. So I love projects that put you in a world that you have to overcome something. And yeah, you take that home every night, man. Cause we overcome it right now. We're trying to figure out how to do the breakfast club with social distancing and I'm right. on an iPad at home. You know what I mean? So we got to be, keep figuring it out. I hate it. It sucks, but you know, I, I got to do this for you because you know, I, I want to see you do good. When Dion does good, we all do good. And Dion right. gives so many black people opportunities, man. It's like, yeah, we got to support hidden empire. I mean, I, I appreciate you see, and, and I'm, I, you know, while we're on the air, man, I just want to tell you, thank you. Envy, you, thank you. Charlamagne, you, you especially, man, there's been, you know, obviously, you know, activism is a big part of my life, uh, working with Robert Smith. Um, I've just been blessed to know you, man, and to have you. And for people that's out there that's listened to this show, it's important you guys know the same thing that this dude is talking, he walks it. <laughs> I've been there on the ground, man, where we've been, you know, marching and, and putting forth efforts behind the scenes and you picking up the phone at four o'clock in the morning, your time, five o'clock in the morning, and putting people together. So I want to just tell you, man, thank you for that, man, because it's a lot of people that I like to call imposters. Those are people that are online, on shows, that talk a good game, <laughs> you know what I mean? But at the end of the day, they're not doing anything, and you're one of those people that are actually really doing it, you know? I mean, and so I want to tell you, thank you for that, man. Like, when we did Be Woke Vote, um, we ended up registering almost 800,000 people over five and a half months. Right. And you were very, you were very instrumental in helping us, giving us a voice, tapping in. I mean, we've done numerous PSAs and I haven't been able to give you no money for nothing. And uh, I just want to tell you, thank you for that, man. It's not about the money though. It's about us moving forward as a community and as a culture. That's what it's about. Absolutely. Period. Period. And then we, when uh, DJ Envy, man, when we going to get, when you getting going, man, like, I mean, you done became the, the sexiest radio host in the world, man. When 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 the show's coming back, man? What's gonna happen, man? What's going on? I mean, we got we got a lot of stuff in the play. You know, we do a, a real estate show where we teach people how to get in the real estate game and and how to get in it the proper way. Uh, so that's the main thing, and also family. Like you know, growing up, the only thing that I seen as family was concerned was the Cosby Show. That's and right. Myself, my mother wasn't a, a lawyer, my father wasn't a doctor, so I couldn't relate. So the fact that you know people can actually turn on and say, "Damn, he's he's from the same place that I am, and and he That's did right. it the right way." Yeah, he made mistakes, he had problems, but he still be able to show love to his wife and show love to his kids. But my whole thing is 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 financial freedom and generational wealth. You know, like I said, I didn't know anything about buying a house or investing. My parents didn't know. I was the first person in my family to go to college. So my whole my whole thing is if I can teach my community how to do it and not get them, not charge them ten thousand dollars, but really teach them the explanation and and, and show them 
This is why you need good credit and this guy can help you with your credit. And this is where you get you know, loans from and what a, a hard money loan is, what a conventional loan is and, and mm. what this is and the FHA loan. Like those are the things that we need to talk more about. And that's why I'm so big yes. on it because you know, my first house I bought, my interest rate was 14%, you know what I mean? And you know who hooked me up with that person? Buster Rhymes, cause he didn't know. So Buster Rhymes hooked me up with a guy that charged, you know, and we just didn't know. So now I'm able to help and talk people and really guide them the right way. So those are the most important things for myself, man. Help, helping our community. Cause if we won't do it, we don't help each other. Nobody else will. Man, well, you're doing a great job, man. That's why I asked like what's happening, man. Cause I, I we all first generation, whatever it is we're doing. Right, and that's right. really that's really unique for all of us, man. I was just having a conversation last night about, you know, when you first generation, you fall down, you bump your head, you don't know because you can never point to anyone that has done. I don't know anyone that was a director or a writer or owned a company. You know what I mean? So now you like, damn, what do you do? How do you do this? So I'm 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 really, really excited, man, to see what you guys are doing and, and what you guys are doing for the community. So that's dope, man, because don't nobody know nothing about real estate. <laughs> you know what I mean? Creative? How, how do you stay creative in a time like this? Because even for myself, you know, usually my creative juices happen when I'm out and about. Like I can be in a town that nobody knows of and you see something, you'd be like, wow. But now that you're in the house so much, how do you continue to creative juices? You know what, for me is is unique, man. I'm like, it doesn't matter. Like, like confined spaces like we are now where you just kind of locked in. That's when I'm the most creative because my mind is just wandering. You know, I was the dude in high school getting put out of class because I keep on talking, uh, reciting movies, doing predator lines, you know what I mean? So I'm always kind of turning. And, uh, but this is really dope, man, to be able to just kind of sit back. Although 2020 has been very impactful for all of us and a lot of people have you know, lost their lives. It's been one of the most unique moments in time for me because it's the first time we get to see who we are. All the media has been turned off, your life has been turned off and now you got to look in the mirror and be like, who am I? And what am I about? Because it ain't about nothing else but your health and your spiritual energy in terms of you living life. And um, I've actually like pushed forward in 2020, man. We've gotten a lot of successful things done. And you know, here's one of them, Fatal coming out Christmas. I would have never thought I would have had a movie releasing at Christmas time, but hey man, thank you 2020. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Dion, we appreciate you, my brother. And I know you offered to buy an additional ticket for people who purchased a ticket to see Fatal in theaters. How can people cash in on that free additional ticket? Yeah, man, you go to uh, adam.com, adamtickets.com. And yes, right now what we're doing is the opening weekend, man. If you buy a ticket to Fatal, wherever you are in the country, I'm buying you a additional ticket to go see the film. Uh, also, please go to amctheaters.com to see how you could book out a theater. But outside of all of that, go spend the money and go see this film, man. Fatal starring Hillary Swank, Michael Ely, Mike Coulter, that's Luke Cage, Tyron Turner. Oh, yeah, that's Kane from Minister Society. Go see this film, man. It's incredible, and you will love it. If you love Black and Blue or The Intruder or you like Fatal Attraction or Gone Girl, this is the movie for you to see, man. It's incredible. Let me ask you one more question. They always say that these Fatal Attraction movies, they if you've seen one, you've seen them all. How was Fatal different? Oh, it's different in every way, man. First of all, it's a it's a complex thriller. So it's not about a man sleeping with a woman and then she crazy. That's not what the film is about. And um, I would also say this to that. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't think I've repeated any type of film ever in my career where you're like, oh, I've seen that movie before. You might say that in the beginning when you see a trailer, but everyone is consistently like, no, that's a different movie. But here's the thing, man. If you think about the film business right now. We the only people do that with each, we the only ones that do that with film. How many Spider-Mans have they made? That's and true. don't nobody say, man, it's the same Spider-Man. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, we do that with each other, man. Any movie we make is always, oh, that's just like, you know? But I, don't, I pride myself on making films that are not just like. So Fatal is completely different than anything you've ever seen, I will guarantee it. When you get in the theater, you're gonna be like, oh, I did not know that was gonna happen. That's what's gonna happen. All right. Well, Deion, yeah, we appreciate you, King. Absolutely. Thank you, brother. Appreciate y'all, man. God bless, man, and please be safe, and I appreciate the time. All yes, right. Sir. My brother. Breakfast right. Club is Deion Taylor, y'all. Yeah.